Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a little bit of a negative video. Um, I'm going to be talking about books that disappointed me. Now, this is not exactly a books I didn't like video because I know those are super popular. Some of these books I still gave great ratings on booktube, or not booktube, great ratings to on Goodreads or even like did a really good review on this channel. But they weren't what I was expecting them to be and I was let down. There is one of one of these books has a five star rating on my Goodreads because I was feeling very generous and I was very pumped about it. But looking back, it was definitely very disappointing. Um, I have a couple on here that are kind of controversial. And then I have a couple on here that are honestly some of my least favorite books of all time. <laughs> the reason a book could have disappointed me could be for a variety of different reasons. It could be because of all the hype it got on booktube or like critical hype or just synopsis hype. You know when you like read the synopsis of a story and you get so excited to read it because you're like this sounds amazing and then you read it and you're like okay. So that's a couple of those. Um, some of these are like concluding novels to series that I didn't love, stuff like that. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into it. So the first one, I feel like I don't have to discuss why it was disappointing. I feel like it's just a known fact on booktube that this was a disappointing book. And I also feel like when I read it, I wasn't disappointed. I read this the day it came out, literally waited for it. When it came out, picked it up at Target, read it all day and finished it. And I still liked it. Like I still gave it like a good rating. I was like, wow, that was great. Like it's done. That was back when I was a lot less critical of books. Like unless it, unless I hated it, I was pretty much just like, this is great. But looking back, this was a disappointing book and that is Allegiant. I feel like I don't have to discuss why. I feel like that's an overly beaten horse at this point on booktube, but yeah. Next up is author hype. So basically I had read a bunch of books by this author and really enjoyed them and I was so excited to get into this book because it was becoming a movie and I was just like oh my gosh it's gonna be great and it wasn't. I didn't like it honestly. And then it's Paper Towns by John Green. I really did not like this book. I just found it to be annoying and I found, what the hell's her name? Margot. I found Margot to be the most unlikable, obnoxious character. And I was just the entire time like, what, why? Why do we have to care about her? Like, just leave her alone. And like, I get he was in love with her and blah, blah, blah. But like, ugh. I just did not like this book. I didn't like the premise of this book. I love John Green. I love An Abundance of Catherines, which is very unpopular opinion. I liked that book. I love Looking for Alaska, Fault in Our Stars, this. I just, no. Okay, so another case of author hype. I love Nicholas Sparks. I find that he can write stories that really like straight chords with me. He writes characters that I really like, I get very invested in, and I care about them a lot. <sighs> I read one of his books that I was shocked because I did not give a damn about these characters. Everything that happened to them, I was like, whatever. And like, it became a movie and all I ever heard was how good the movie was and how powerful it was. And I just couldn't bring myself to watch it because I just did not like this book. And that is the best of me. I just feel like he wrote this in like a hurry and there was like no character development. And I just didn't give a crap about what happened to these characters. I just didn't. Usually I'm so invested in the love story and I'm so invested in the characters and like someone always dies in a Nicholas Sparks book. Always. You just got to guess which one it is. And honestly, I didn't care. There were times where I was just like, okay, 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 okay. Ending. And like the ending is supposed to be like this big like, oh my god. And I was just kind of like eye roll. Like, I love cheesy romance. Nicholas Sparks is like king of cheesy romance. Love it. Love him for it. He's great. I love it. I... <sighs> so the next one is a mix of author hype and just like general hype um, around this book. People freaked out about this book. Everyone I knew was reading this book and being like, oh my god, it's great. You need to read it. You need to read it. And basically, it's Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. If you know me, you know that Gillian Flynn is one of my all-time favorite authors. I love her. I think she just does amazing twisted dark books and like writes these characters that you hate but you love and just oh I love it. It's so good. 
I read Dark Places and Sharp Objects, and then I finished it off with Gone Girl. I really didn't like Gone Girl. I, like, really didn't like Gone Girl. I found the ending to be way more than just unsatisfying, but, like, frustrating and just I was so angry <laughs> like I was so angry at the end of it I just was like I read that entire book for that that's the end I mm -mm, no just mm -mm. I didn't like the girl um and there wasn't like redeeming qualities for me like her other books their main characters are awful and like they're really obnoxious human beings but you have these redeeming qualities that you see and you're like okay i can still root for you because of this i didn't have that here i honestly was just like i don't care like she goes missing obviously most people know the premise of this book this guy's wife goes missing and he's basically you know being he's the main sub like suspect for the murder, or the murder, the disappearance, and uh, I just didn't care after a while. Like, there's like a lot of twists in the book, and the final twist, if you can call it that, just, no. I didn't care. I did see the movie before I read it, which may contribute to it, but I hated the movie as well. Like, the whole storyline, I just, it made me mad, so I was just like, no, can't root for this character, don't care. And... I was so disappointed because people love this and I really don't understand because she has such better novels. The next book goes along with the last one. Basically this book was described to me like a Gillian Flynn-esque book and that it was really thrilling and terrifying and like amazing and intriguing and investing and blah, people freaked out about it and I was like okay I'm down I'll read it. And that is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. People love this book, and it's a movie now. I'm not gonna see it because no thanks. I don't understand, really. Um, I didn't like the main character. I felt like she deserved everything she got. I never felt bad for her because I was just like, you're so obnoxious. I get alcoholism is a disease, blah, 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 but like, oh my God, all she did was whine all the time. And I just was like, I get it, your life sucks now, but you're insane. Like the things she would do, I was like, I cannot back you. I cannot back you. I don't even feel bad for you. Like, I'm a crazy ex sometimes. I'll admit it. Ask my exes. Sometimes I do things that are not flattering. This was a lot. Like, I, mm -mm. and just all of it, the twist, I was just kind of like, ugh. Like, I felt kind of bad for her at the end. Like, when you learn, like, the ending, I was like, oh, okay. But it wasn't enough to save the book for me. I just, <sighs> I didn't like it. I didn't like, I liked some of it. Like I liked the mystery about the couple and like, it's like, oh, she went missing. Like why? And just, ugh. and I guess you're like supposed to be like, oh my gosh, with a lot of the connections and stuff. I just was let down. I just felt like it was close to being that like really investing, thrilling mystery novel that Gillian Flynn can make me do, like can do, but it just didn't quite reach it and for that I was just really disappointed. So I did a whole like half hour long review book talk about this book when it came out, actually a few months after it came out because I'm really late on stuff like that. Um, but I was really into it, I was really excited about it and that really hindered and like I put on my rose-colored glasses because of the franchise and how much I love this franchise and these stories and I was just so excited for another one and then I read it and I found good parts of it. Like I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the story, but I enjoyed it like fan fiction like everyone else says and that is obviously Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It has five stars on my Goodreads because it's Harry Potter. And that's it. And I almost like want to take that back because I feel like this just ruins the Harry Potter name in a lot of ways. It's fan fiction, find it and published. And I just... Faith Joy 19 years... No, it's just, it kind of... I'm not gonna say it's ru it ruins it, it taints the Harry Potter name. It really does. And it's because JK Rowling didn't write it and I honestly don't think John Tiffany or Jack Thorne, Jack Thorne or whatever, read Harry Potter. <laughs> like, I don't think they did. And 
I just, oh, it lacked JK's eloquence. It, it, it lacked, it lacked Joe's eloquence and her way of describing everything and making everything so magical. This just lacked everything. Character development was just awful. Like, it's like I didn't even know the characters anymore, especially Ron. I was like, who is Ron? Like, what? Like, all of a sudden he's like this super goofy guy. And I was like, that's not who Ron was. But okay. And it's just all of it. Harry, I always find Harry to be a bit of an obnoxious, annoying character. And it's okay. But in these, I was, in this, I was just like, oh my god, I'm gonna kill him. And just, no. No. I almost want to read it again. But then I really don't. Like, I kind of want to forget this ever happened at the same time. I don't even know what to do. Because, like, it has a five star. I'm so conflicted when it comes to this book. All I know is that it was disappointing. I don't know what to do with it at all. Okay, so I have one classic here. And the reason this disappointed me was because people love this book. And I know to each their own, you know, whatever. But going into this, I had rather high expectations because my brother, who never reads, loved this, loves this book. One of my good friends, Sarah, who is a big bookworm, loves this book. You know, I just knew a bunch of people who loved it. And people who were like, oh, you know, if you've ever felt like an outcast, you're really gonna like this book and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, I'm down. And I read it and I was just like, mm mm. And that is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Uh, Holden Caulfield just. Uh, he just annoys me. And that's one of the biggest downfalls for me and hyped books is that if you have a character who annoys me, a lot of the time I can't look past it. Like, if I don't feel like he has enough redeeming qualities. I'm out. Like, I'm done. And this is just that book. I just felt like everything that happened that could have made me feel for Holden or, you know, relate to him was tainted by just obnoxious immaturity. And I just, mm-mm, mm-mm. I had to read this for school, and I haven't read it since. I kind of want to reread it and to see if, like, maybe life experience has changed it. I have notes in here from school. What does this say? Mouthy wimp. All right. I, <laughs> what is his obsession with the ducks? Huge wimp. Like, literally, I'm just over here like, he's hateful and bitter. <sighs> Not my favorite. This next one I'm on the fence about because I don't dislike it at all in any way, shape, or form. I still am very excited about this author. I want to read more from her. So this book in particular was sold to me as, like, cheesy romance, but, like, really kind of dark. Like, one of those, like, sad, tear-jerking romances that you're gonna get really into. And I don't know. I just had really high expectations when I read this. And when I read it, I was just like... And that is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. So Tashopolis says this is her favorite Colleen Hoover novel. And I just was hearing, I read this two years ago in the summer after my freshman year. And I just read a lot of hype about this. Like people really liked this book. So when I read it, I was just like, huh? I didn't like the prose aspect of every other chapter. I guess his perspective is in like poems and, or not prose, poems. <laughs> um... I didn't love the poetic aspect. I just... Mm, and there was a part of me that didn't care about him all that much. Which sounds awful, like, when you learn what happens to him. But, like, I don't know. It's just... It was fine. And I was very disappointed because I was expecting to love this book. And I think that's the biggest thing was, like, coming out of it just kind of meh. I was really disappointed because I was expecting to be obsessed with this. So we're coming down to the last three books and the first two are recent releases, well more recent releases than some of these, um, that I actually was really excited for for no particular reason. Like I'd seen them in book hauls and that was pretty much it. Like no one I'd watched had reviewed it or said it was great. I just for some reason was really drawn to these books so I was really excited for them and they just let me down and the first one is The Hundred Lies of Lizzie Lovett by Chelsea Sidoti. I've talked about this book a lot recently on my channel but <sighs> it's another case of annoying main characters and what I found funny 
was the back of this book says, readers can't get enough of Hawthorne, Hawthorne Creeley. One of the best YA novel, novels I have ever read, an exploration of what it's like to be the sort of person who doesn't fit in. I've never identified with a character more in my life. Hawthorne Creeley is laugh out loud, funny, biting, insecure, obnoxious, heartachingly lonely. I've never before loved a book as much as I love this book. What? <laughs> like, okay, uh, I think I'm gonna like Hawthorne Creeley. No, I don't like Hawthorne Creeley. Oh my god. <laughs> the decisions the things she does in this book i'm like you act like you're 12 like i get it she's 17 and i tried to like think of it like that like okay who were you three four years ago you know and even i was like i would not have done that i would not have done what she just did i would not have believed the things she tries to make herself believe in this if you read it you know what i'm talking about i just uh, i felt like I didn't know what genre genre I was re reading sometimes. I was like, this is a contemporary, right? Contemporary with like a um, bit of thriller. And then it just did some stuff <laughs> that I was like, are we doing like magical realism or is this going into like fantasy stuff? I, uh, I had to put this book down so many times because it just was like annoying to me. This took way longer to read than it should have. This and the next book, I was I should have finished way quicker than I did, and it was just because I was getting so uh, like irritated by the characters and by the plot line and just I yeah the romance in this oh my god just all of it I was just like ugh it was painful it was painful. There's a very powerful aspect of this book. There is, and it's important, and I liked the aspect of it, and I didn't think it was done in a problematic manner, but everything else in it just, ugh, and getting to the part where I was like, wow, I just, no, thank you, which is funny, because I only, I gave this a three-star rating. I'm so generous right after I finish books, and I really should, like, sleep on it for, like, a week, because I end up feeling very differently about books. And the next one I'm gonna talk about is Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve Tullock. Or touch oak? I don't know. Hmm. This is another book I was super drawn to and I don't really know why, I just was. It might be the cover and it might be that it's super short. Um, it just seems, okay, so it says, a hero, a villain, a liar, who's who? And I love multiple perspectives. It's one of my favorite things in a book. This has that. It has three perspectives. Um, I like mysterious dark stuff, as you probably can recognize. This just, oh my god. There's magical realism in this, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just... <sighs> the characters, yet again, there's one character in this that I think she's supposed to be like 16, 17 years old. And I honestly, the amount of times they described her as childlike that I kept picturing like an eight-year-old girl and then she would do things that you know eight-year-old girls should not be doing and I was like disturbed because okay I get it she's 17 but stop saying how childlike and small she is and I'm like oh my god this is like gross like I just found it disturbing most of the time I didn't like the characters I didn't hate Midnight he's fine but Wink and Poppy. Like, Poppy you're supposed to hate. Wink I never liked. I was immediately just like, oh, God, you're annoying. And she's the little girl character. And I just was like, no, thank you. And, like, Poppy's a bitch. And she's supposed to be a bitch. And Midnight's just, like, a pushover, honestly. And, like, half the stuff he did, I was like... I just found very little redeeming qualities about the characters. And the plot line was just like... Okay, <laughs> like, I don't know. I just was so disappointed because I was so excited for this and just it let me down completely. And the last book or books I'm going to talk about is a series that I haven't finished yet. And I am in the process of finishing it. I'm on the third one. I just, well, I finished the third one. I need to read the next two. And I think the reason I'm disappointed is because everyone read these books when they were little. I didn't. My brother did. And... Because of that, I never did. Because I wouldn't read anything Jacob read. But I understand that they liked them when they were little. I could see that. I could see where people, like, I read Harry Potter when I was little. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I could see where, like, people who read it now, who are, like, my age or older, aren't as in love with it. I could see that. And maybe that's what's happening with this. The amount of hype these books have. Um, 
is ridiculous. It's like Harry Potter kind of hype. Especially on booktube, people love this series. I understand. There's tons of spinoffs and I'm gonna read, I want to read all of them. Like I don't want to not finish it. And some of these books that I've read so far have five star ratings on my Goodreads because I enjoyed them. They're fun. They're lighthearted, you know, that kind of stuff. And maybe I'm just not in like a place right now where I want to read lighthearted stuff and fun stuff. But um, it's the Percy Jackson series. By no means do I dislike this series. I'm enjoying it. I'm continuing on. Um, it's good. I rated them between three and five stars, respectively. I think the first one I gave like a five star, four star. I can't remember. I don't remember. But I'm enjoying them. I'm just disappointed. Because if you were to talk to some to somebody who read these when they were young, oh my god, it's like godsend. But uh, godsend. <laughs> um, I'm just disappointed I think because I'm not enjoying them as much and it makes sense why I'm not because I didn't read these when I was little so there's no nostalgia factor there um but they're good they're just not my favorite also I'm not a huge mythology person if I'm honest so I think that has a lot to do with it as well so thank you guys so much for watching I hope I didn't offend you at all with my opinions obviously if you are obsessed with one or all of these books that's amazing um it's just a preference thing for most people especially for me I'm a very uh preference-driven reader. <laughs> um, I can look beyond a lot of stuff, but sometimes it's just glaringly in my face. And this isn't like I didn't like these books, because most of them I actually did enjoy. They just had aspects to them that I didn't like them as much as I was expecting to. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below any books that you were disappointed after you read. Not necessarily that you didn't like, but you were disappointed by. But yeah, comment, like, subscribe, all the normal stuff, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!